story to tell. Today, the world is so familiar with M1 Abrams tanks. People forget that the M60 tank has played an important role in U.S. military history. This tank has maintained its position in Europe in front of Soviet forces during the Cold War. The two most popular production versions of M60 were M60A1 and M60A3. They used 105mm gun, but there was a special version, the M60A2, which is commonly known under its nickname Starship. The M60A2 is much like Sheridan, equipped with a 152mm gun that can fire guided missiles. Only 540 M60A2s were built, compared to 8,000 M60A1s and 1,000 M60A3s. By 1982, almost every M60A2 was replaced by a turret, reused with a traditional 105mm gun and converted into an M60 A3 model, meaning that the tank was only over 5 years old. The M60 tank has been built based on the tank M48 Pan and has been officially on the battlefield since 1950. The Pan tanks can hit targets from a distance of 1,500 meters. The crew has four members and has perfect armor. Tanks have used 90mm guns. The first improved M60 tank, the M60A1, has a new turret system with headlights using a night vision system and a more powerful engine. The tank was transferred to the Israeli army during the 1973 battle. However, the M60A1 tank suffered heavy damage from the Egyptian army's 83 Sakur anti-tank missiles. Not only that, the ammunition used for the gun was also easy to ignite and endanger the crew. This has made the US military have to improve to help M60 resist anti-tank guns and improve engines. The M60A2 model was replaced with a turret and has a separate rocket launcher system. This allows the A2 model to take enemy tanks remotely without worrying about being fired. The M60A2, which is commonly known under its nickname Starship, was much like Sheridan, equipped with a 152mm gun launcher that can fire guided missiles. However, this model also shows many deadly advantages. A total of 526 M60A2 tanks were built. Other sources report that 540 of these tanks were built. It was withdrawn from the US Army. The M60A2 was designed as a stopgap vehicle until the joint US German MBT 70 project was ready for service. This project was intended to provide both the United States and German militaries with one main battle tank. The United States altered the M60A2 in 1971. However, production did not start until 1973 and continued through 1975 at the Chrysler tank plant in Warren, Michigan. Aside from the turret and weaponry changes, the tank was nearly identical to the regular M60. It featured the same 4.29-inch glasses armor, torsion bar suspension, and the 750 horsepower Continental AVDS 1792 V12 air-cooled turbo diesel engine, which could propel the vehicle to approximately 48 km per hour. The M60A2 was completed with a new turret housing an M162 152mm gun. It consisted of a large disc with a narrow channel 
in the center. Each crew member in the turret has their own hatch, a rare feature in tanks. As a result, each crew member was effectively isolated from one another with the gunner and loader separated by Serena missiles in their storage position. The commander was isolated in the rear compartment under a large rotating machine gun equipped cupular, which somewhat negated the low profile silhouette of the turret. There was a mounting point to the left of the gun for a Xenon wild light or infrared spotlight for nighttime operations. A large basket for storage was added to the rear of the turret and also included banks of smoke grenade launchers, one bank of four on each side of the turret. The 152mm gun, similar previously used on the M551 Sheridan light tank. This gun could fire both ordinary munitions and MGM-51 Shalala anti-tank guided missiles. The ordinary munitions were shot, fed with combustible cases and had to be carefully handled. These rounds had an effective range of 1.5 km and were sufficient for infantry support role, but had poor accuracy at longer ranges. The Shalala anti-tank guided missiles were intended to deal with hostile tanks at longer ranges. These missiles were stored in aluminum cases and had a range of up to 3 km. Apparently, operational experience of this unusual tank revealed that the 152mm gun was inferior in terms of range and accuracy to standard 105mm and 120mm tank guns firing ordinary munitions. Furthermore, the Solela anti-tank missiles could not penetrate armor of the emerging heavy protected Soviet MBTs, such as the T-80. Furthermore, the M60A2 tank and the Solela missiles had complicated electronics and guidance systems. These were expensive to produce and troublesome to maintain. The Solela missiles ended up almost never being fired except for crew training purposes. Initially, there were a number of problems with the new gun, but eventually, most of them were solved. Secondary armament consisted of a 12.7mm machine gun in the commander's rotating cupola and a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun. This weapon is fired, loaded, and serviced from a fully protected position. M60A2 was the first tank to be equipped with laser range fighter. The turret interior also received Kevlar spore lilas. The M60A2's combat load consisted of 33 M409 rounds and 13 MGM-51 Cirela missiles. The A2 had a short service life succumbing to the same feelings of Sheridan concerning the missile system. The new turret design did little to help matters, largely isolating crew members into different portions of the vehicle, complicating maintenance of the somewhat unreliable components of this Bay Edge tank. All of these issues contributed to the vehicle being of less than stellar performance and lastly useless as much more than an infantry support vehicle, though admittedly, the short barrel length could let it move and fire in a jungle a bit easier than a tank with a longer barrel. But the vehicle was never deployed to Vietnam. It was quickly realized that the vehicle was not going to live up to all its claims, and the search for a better vehicle continued, eventually leading to the M60 A3 nearly a decade later, as they waited for the XM-1 to enter production and service as the M-1 Abrams. The M60A2 proved a disappointment, though its technical advancements would pave the way for future tanks, as the MBT-70 project 
and the later M1 Abrams main battle tank. Most of the M60A2 tanks were rebuilt as M60A3s, or the hulls converted to armor vehicle launch bridge vehicles and M728 combat engineer vehicles, with a few M60A2s retained as museum pieces. My video of M60A2 Starship ends here. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye, see you again in the next videos.